This week, we've got a lot of welding to do. I'm gonna to try to finish everything under the car, get it all prepped, paint it, and then hopefully start final assembly. All right, because I want the bumper to look kind of like a stock bumper, I'm trying to add a bunch of structure to it so it'll still be functional for an off-road vehicle. So I've added this tube. This fits right in the bottom plastic fascia bit of the bumper. So this tucks right into it really tight and will protect the battery box, which I already crunched during our phase one uh, build process. And then, I, you know, we got two work coming up to both the body in different spots back here and up here. So it'll add a bunch of rigidity. This would be a nice landing zone if I'm coming off a rock and the back bottoms out. I'm okay with rock rash and stuff on bumper parts, but I don't want the bumper to come off completely. So this'll hang onto the bumper, allow it to drag, it'll earn its battle scars, but this'll honestly protect the whole rest of the vehicle. Okay, so I did a bunch of bumper stuff without Grant being here and didn't get a lot of it on film. He's gonna be mad. But I figured I'd show you what I'm up to now. Um, basically, this is the rear bumper. I'm shortening it uh, because, you know, I made the wheel arch way bigger for a 40. I want this to line up with where the trim is on the car. So I lined it up on there, cut it, then uh, basically just clamped it back together. These little butt weld clamps. So there's a the little rod guy on the back. And then just tighten them, keep it flat. Then I taped in between and panel bonded it. All right, in keeping with trying to get all the tabs and stuff welded on, one of these items would be the bumper. I have these, this is the factory tab. And then, you know, I cut everything off and everything was kind of crunchy. So I made a new little tab here. This slides into the groove fellow there. And then I get to pick where it's gonna line up, probably something like that. And I'll zap it on and do the same on the other side. So then that bracket will be there before I paint stuff. Yell if that side's gonna crunch anything. Space. Some space, some space, nice. About even. I'm gonna put the plastic trim back over here so this will line up. It doesn't look like it right now, but it will. Um, and then yeah, so next up I gotta figure out this whole big, you know, hole that I didn't finish here. It's got a face, kind of. Got my list of things before paint. Bumper tabs now exist. Lots to do. So a bunch of the other details we have to finish involve some interior work. If you remember the whole premise of this build is to combine a decent interior, decent sort of luxury car and make it a capable off-roader. But in order for the interior to be nice, I need to put it back together. I put these giant shock mounts in the way here. So I've been working to trim up all the plastic panels um, it's a lot more complicated than that because behind everything is brackets and stuff that held everything up here and all that was cut out. So I had to remake all of the brackets for that, all the seat mounting hardware, and then I had to just cut the floor, which I dealt with, trimmed it around the shock things. And then underneath, there's a couple more brackets we're gonna show you in a second to uh, mount the rest of it. I swear it works. <laughs> So this trunk floor thing is actually plywood. I didn't realize that. I peeled back all of the carpet. So it's all glued on. I peeled all the layers back, then cut it, and then trimmed the carpet so I can just wrap the same stuff back over. That way I don't have to rewrap the whole thing. It all matches. And when I get around to gluing it, it'll all look like it was supposed to come that way. But part of it, I had to trim a little far because if you look at the way the shock mounts work, I wanted to be able to access this storage area here without having to remove this. And in order to flip it up, you can see it gets close here, but then when it's down, there's a gap because, you know, geometry. So I came up with a little bracket and then I made out of spare bits of plywood. I just kind of made this little thing to space it up and I'll wrap this with carpet later, but this will bolt on, be a little placeholder. And then underneath this bracket holds both this panel 
and I left windows in it so I can run the wiring or hoses or whatever I need to back in these corners. So it's basically the same bracket on each side. Um, but yeah, that was one of the last finishing touches in here. All right, so we're at the final stage where I'm gonna start prepping everything for the last time. So that means finish welding all these brackets and tabs that are on here, figuring out solutions for these big holes I had to cut for steering clearance, a handful of little odds and ends. But after that, I'm gonna paint it and then it'll be ready to go back together for the last time for all the drivetrain. All right, so the entire chassis of the X5 has been finished, welded, prepped, and painted, which is a big deal. It's been a lot of work. I have like 60 pounds of MIG wire in this project, which is insane. Um, but everything's done, painted, ready to go, and we can finally start throwing things back together for real and actually tighten bolts for once. So this is gonna be good. All right, so you already saw all the coolers CSF sent for oil and transmission and stuff, but they also sent me a brand new radiator and an AC condenser too. So I've been keeping them in a box for the time being so I didn't accidentally put a hole in them, but now we're done with the mock-up phase. I'm putting stuff together for real. So I've got the shrouds all cleaned up. I'm gonna put these new pretty radiators in and hopefully never touch them again. Both sides. Woohoo! It's in. So since this is going together for the last time, I'm gonna actually prep this stuff to be assembled for real. So I'm gonna lock tight the bolts on the outside. I'm gonna never seize uh, all these slip joints. So this is a double adjuster. One's left hand, one's right hand thread. I'm gonna put a little never seize on both, then run them in. So that way I can adjust them in the future, regardless of if they get damp and dirty and muddy and all that stuff. So I've learned that I like the tube much better than the brush style of Never See stuff. And I think the copper stuff's better than the, the silver. And on top of that, you can see it better when it's behind your ear. So since these tie rods are now gonna be tightened forever, hopefully, uh, I'm gonna add a little uh, thread locking compound on there. I'm gonna just go with the blue, so that way if I have to take it apart again, I don't need the torch or anything like that like you would for a red style Loctite, so. This is kind of the medium strength, enough to keep the bolt from running away. Steering's important, so uh, having tie rods fall out is bad. Don't do it. Little thread locker like that. I'll make sure they stay on. Oh, another thing that I've added since we're doing final assembly now is a big washer on any of the tie rods that are single shear like this. So that's called a safety washer. So realistically, I'd notice when one of these starts to wear and get sloppy. But if you don't notice and it starts to egg itself out, you don't want something that, you know, if the hole gets hogged out enough, the tie rod can pop off the bolt. So if you run a big washer like this, it at least keeps it retained, even if it's sloppy, so it can't fall off and you lose steering altogether. All right, so we're at the point now where I can start adding oil to it. I'm not ready to start it yet, but I want oil in there so I don't forget later. Um, important thing to note, this is a fresh engine. Everything inside it is clean from Texas Speed, but we're still gonna treat it like a proper break-in because you're still seating rings. There is still gonna be some metal debris, although I know everything else in there is clean. So we're gonna run some oil just for break-in, put some miles on it, drain it all back out. Then we're gonna change it again and then go with some of the additives that Garrett suggested. Uh, so we have Garrett here from Luka Molly. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll be smart. We'll start off with the 550 Molly Gen and we'll start as a wide range um, viscosity. 
And then as you start looking at the oil pressures and temps and that kind of stuff, we can go to either a, even down to a 530 or as much as a 1060, depending on what you need. But doing that this is a uh, custom application and performance wise, you wanna make sure that you, you know, take the time to test all that out. And so you've done this before. So uh, uh, we, we're gonna leave that in your hands. So yeah. it'll be good. Pretty excited about this. Yeah, this is gonna be a fun one. But yeah, that's the kind of thing. If you're doing stuff out of the ordinary, with different bearing clearances, this from Texas Speed is pretty well set up, but other engines I've built, it's a good idea if you're doing stuff that's getting heavily abused, check your temps and pressures, see what the oil is doing, make some decisions based on that, and ask, you know, that's why I've been bouncing stuff off Garrett, like, hey, this is what my drift car does when it's 10 billion degrees, things super nuclear hot, and I still wanna go back out on track. What's the best oil for me to not lose time and not have it grenade? Well, we've had Stefan here in the past to talk about the products and, and about the technologies. And uh, I called him yesterday and said, hey, Stefan, what are we doing? He says, they did what? <laughs> he says, yeah, so we're putting a big, a big V8 in a, uh, in a, in a German uh, X5 of BMW. So uh, pretty excited and uh, can't wait to hear it start. Yeah, me too. But yeah, I don't, I don't perfect, believe in the funnel thing. I don't the know perfect how pour, let's see what happens. Yeah. It's never had oil before, you know? So you got that, yeah. you know, that angle going. What's life without risk, you know? So we're pouring on a 45. That's good. I think, I think it would be a good shot from this side. I think if we're going to screw up, we want to make sure we get it on film. That's so. fine by me. Yeah. But I might have to do some goofy stuff with the bottle angle. But like, it's a, it's a skill. You're on the side of the road. You need to add some oil. You don't always have a funnel. You should so, practice so we, without so, funnels. So do we go, is it a side pour? Is it a straight pour? I'm, at the, I'm going to start with the upside down. Oh, no. Okay. And All then right. try to get some trajectory. Although... Have we set the park brake? There is no parking brake as I'm rolling all over the place. I will say this fender support into my shin, misery. Very sharp. I think it's kind of like getting a tattoo. You're doing good things, but it hurts, right? It does, yeah. Look, I mean, yeah, I spilt a little, but nothing crazy. No, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. I think you did a good job there. Impressive. Eh? Yeah. You've done this before. I've done this a couple times. <laughs>